Alright, so this time we are back in parallel circuits again, but instead of um, looking at calculations, we are going to specifically watch what is happening when we have a fault in our parallel circuit. And in this specific video, we are going to look at open faults in a parallel circuit. So for an example, we are going to show that R2 has um, opened and so once we have our fault, we start looking at what happens with current because, of course, parallel circuits are current dividers. So your current is going to tell you in large part what's going on with your cir circuit, current and resistance. Because remember, parallel circuits, um, voltage is the same everywhere, and that's actually true. We're going to talk about it in a couple minutes with both conducting and non-conducting branches. So current first. We look at the red lines going up on the screen. And we see that now we have current flow only through branch 1 and branch 3, where before we had it through branch 1, branch 2, and branch 3. So because we only have two conducting branches instead of the original three, we will find that total resistance will change. And in fact, total resistance when you remove branches in a parallel circuit goes up. And we're going to see this example. So that was our original ohmic value, 2.86k ohms. Now, with only two conducting branches, we find that with our new math, we get 6.67k ohms, which is indeed higher. And this is a perfect time to use our Ohm's Law arrow theory to try to see ahead what's going to happen with current. So if I look at my voltage and my resistance, I already know what's going on with those. I put those, stuff, I put those arrows in, resistance is going up, voltage is staying the same. So to balance out my equation, I know that current must be going down. So to get a better look at that, we're going to see what's going on with our individual branch currents. If I look at branch 1, I see that 100 volts divided by 10K gives me exactly the same current we had earlier of 10 milliamps. Now branch 2 is going to be different. Originally, I had 100 volts divided by 5K, which gave, which gave me 20 milliamps. But now, branch 2 has an open with no path for current, so there is no current flow. And instead, I see 0 milliamps there. Now, when I go over to branch 3, again, exactly the same numbers, 100 volts divided by 20K, I see the same 5 milliamps that I saw when we did our parallel circuit calculations. So I look at total current as a whole, and if I um, add all those currents together originally, I came up with 35 milliamps. So that's our original number with all three branches working. Now we only have those two branches working and we add those together and we come up with a much smaller number of 15 milliamps. We can find the same answer of course just like we did in parallel circuit calculations by taking 100 volts divided by our new larger resistive value which is Ohm's law and we get that same 15 milliamps. So we see current did indeed go down. But like I said earlier, we were going to look at voltage, right, as well. And I mentioned that voltage across a conducting branch and voltage across an open branch both will give you applied voltage. And that is because everything in this lower portion below the voltage source and below those resistors are all the same zero. And then everything up here above the resistors and above the voltage source is all that 100 volts. So if I read across that by putting my black lead anywhere down here and my red lead anywhere up here, I'm going to read essentially across my voltage source, which will show me 100 volts, which is how I still see that 100 volt drop on R1, R2, and R3. And which makes sense because we know that we see applied voltage across our open. So 100 volts is our applied voltage, our open is R2. All three branches, both my two conducting and my non-conducting branch, all see 100 volts. All right, next it'll be parallel shorts.